God is amazing. Whilst I was sitting down there and we were praying, uh, whilst we were worshiping, I just had this strong, you know, how God feels about us, how he feels for us. His mercy, love, tenderness. And I pray that we will not take that for granted. That we will respond to the love and the tenderness of God towards us. Today he appears tender, loving and kind. But when he shall appear a second time, he will not be that tender like a lamb. He is coming like a lion. If you have ever seen a ferocious lion, if you have ever seen a lion angry, and you know what I'm talking about. But right now, as we are here, as we are still in this age, the tenderness, the love, the kindness of God is reaching out to every man. It's calling every one of us. And it's up to us to respond or to say no. It's an invitation to throw to all of us. Um, we either respond or we don't. One thing I know is that he will not force any one of us. He will show us, he will put what we need to see before us and we have to see and decide. Um, That's why you are, you are a moral agent. When you make a claim, it's a true claim you make because you know what you're talking about. So you either receive the Lord or you either say no. You are responsible for the choices you make, the decisions you make today. We have been speaking about the Christian life and we've spoken about the justified life. How the Lord has justified us. Anyone who accepts Jesus Christ out of the mercy of God, you become justified. God doesn't care about your past. It's forgotten and forgotten forever and never. He says he will never remember it again. And he says as the east is far from the worst, so will he forget your sins and forget your past. That's, that's the kindness of God that we have today. That's why he will justify us. This Christian life is an amazing thing, an amazing gift of God that we have. And if we take it for granted, we will not go free. And then we spoke about adoption. That is God's act by which he imputes maturity to you. He declares you mature, responsible, publicly. And in that declaration of God, responsibility and privileges are encoded in that declaration. And so you are very responsible and you must be reasonable. Because God will begin to, as it were, rely on you. To work with him, to respond to his calling, to be a tool, a vessel in his hand that he can use in this evil age. The age we are in is really evil. It is. And as many as be willing to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and let him rule over him or her shall be used by the Lord to show his glory, his light in this life. So when we sing the song, let your kingdom come, we are saying, God rule over us. The kingdom of God is the rulership of God. It's the authority of God. You are not independent of God. I don't want to be. I don't want to be. Independent of God. I, I don't want to be. I can't handle it. responsible. Amen. Amen.
Today, I want us to look at what I called regenerated life. The reason why God will justify you and the reason why he will adopt you is because something might have taken place in your life. That's called regeneration. That's why God will say, okay, I've forgotten about your past. I declare you as though you have never committed any sin against me. And now I declare you as a, as a mature person who is supposed to be reasonable. And you have all the privileges that a member of my household has. And you are charged also with responsibilities, things you do. The reason why God will do that is because something might have taken place. And that is regeneration. Regeneration. That word regeneration is the same as born again or born from above. They have the same roots, the same Greek root. Born again or born from above or regeneration. Regeneration is a noun. And then born again is a verb. So isn't that interesting? Born again means born from above. Born from above. The only reason why God will justify you and forget about your past is because now you are born from above. And so your past is forgotten. And God will not look at you as someone born of the flesh. Because Jesus said, that which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born from above is from above. So I want us to look at the regeneration today. Let's read the scriptures uh, from Titus chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. And then we'll read uh, John also. But for now, let's read Titus chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. I'll read. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. That's past life. But when the kindness and the love of God as Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing or renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. That having been justified by his grace, we should become as according to the hope of eternal life. This is the faithful saying, which means it's steadfast. It cannot change. It's true by its very nature. And these things I want you to affirm constantly. See? He says, Paul is telling Titus, I, I want you to affirm this constantly. Constantly. When you meet the people of God, tell them these things. So please, don't be bored if I keep talking about this thing because they are very important. The Christian life, the life we have in Christ, Bible says we should affirm it, not just say it, but affirm it. Affirm it. Hold on to it. Say that it is true. It is there. It is real. That's what it is. That's all I can do. And thank God I believe it. Otherwise, how can I affirm that? Unless you believe it, you cannot affirm it. 
Unless we believe it, you take it for granted. And if we take it for granted, God will take us for granted when the Lord shall appear again. But I pray that we will not take it for granted. We will believe it and affirm it because it's true. It's steadfast thing. Amen. So these things are good and profitable to man. Good and profitable to man. Regeneration is good and profitable to me and to you. Without regeneration, we have no part in Christ. We have no part with the Father. To believe this is profitable to me. That's why I believe it. And to believe it, it's profitable to you. That's why you must believe it. Hallelujah. I pray that your heart will rejoice at these words. Good words are much more precious than gold. Good words are much more sweeter than honey. It's my prayer that your heart will hold on to these words and you will not let go of these words because they are profitable. Amen. Amen. So the word regeneration is a profitable word for you. I mean, so we want to look at it. We want to see what it is today. And so I'm trying to define it or try to describe it. Not define as such, describe it. Because it's far beyond what I can, can define anything. I can only describe it the way I experience it, the way I understand it by the grace of God. That regenerated life is a life imparted. It is imparted. It is given. By God to sinners who believe in Jesus, the life given by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So you see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit working together here to make this word profitable. It's the Father who does the work. He does it through the life giver, the life giving spirit. Christ Jesus. It can only be realized in our lives by the presence of the Holy Spirit inside of us. Amen. Our life in Christ is a regenerated life. Hallelujah. It's a good word. It's profitable. We need to understand it. And after understanding it, let's hold on to it. Let's affirm it. Let's confess it. Let's say it. Let's share it with other people. It's a precious gift. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is spirit. And your word is life. And by the entrance of your word, light comes. Lord, as I speak your word, my, your word, let light come, O oh God, and permeate our heart and mind and bring light to us. Help us understand your word, O oh God. Help us, help our hearts to be transformed, changed completely by your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are able, more than able, to do this in our lives. For we will we yield ourselves to you by the grace that we have received with Father through the love of his son, Jesus. His kindness and tenderness towards us. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I just have this strong fatherly heart, you know, just how a father will feel for his young son or young daughter, a baby or something. And that is, it simply means that's how God feels towards us. He just feels, he feels that we are just helpless, weak, and feeble. And he needs to stand by us all the time. 
Without God standing, standing by your eyes, <laughs> you cannot amount to anything. You can't do anything. And that's why Jesus Christ said, yeah, well, I will not leave you like orphans. You know, I will not let you be fatherless. But I, when I'm gone, I will send the Holy Spirit, who is a comforter, the teacher, the one who walks alongside you. See, God always walks beside us. Otherwise, no one can place him because we don't know the way to place him. He guides us by his spirit. We may know him, walk his way. Without the Holy Spirit, reading the Bible will be useless, meaningless. It will just be like a storybook, a history you are reading. And you can't even connect it because. It is spiritually descent. And if you don't have the spirit of God in you, you cannot descend it. But when you read it, it will be dis disjointed history. It will not even make sense for you. So you need the Holy Spirit. And we see this in the life of a, a teacher of the law, a teacher of the Bible. I mean the Old Testament. A teacher. Someone who, if I may say, made his living by teaching the law, did not understand it. Why? Because he was void of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God was not in him. And so he just read and read it. It's just a story. But the Word of God is only a story. His Spirit is life. We we'll see this in Nicodemus' life. I'll read from John chapter 3. John 3, verses 1 to 9. Because the word born again and regeneration are the same word, they are connected. One is a verb, one is a noun. And so we need whatever Paul is saying in Titus, we can understand it better in what Jesus is saying here in John chapter 3. Um, Jesus is answering the question of uh, Nicodemus, who sneaked to Jesus. Because he was a teacher of the law, right? He was teacher of the, of the Old Testament. And, and the whole system was against Christ, so he couldn't go to Christ openly. And so he has to go to Christ in the night when nobody could see him. Thank God for this guy's life, because at, at least there is, there is there's some level of willingness, willingness in him to find out the truth. And so he would sneak in, sneak in on Christ in the night to get this understanding. So that the reading of the law of the Bible will not be empty. It will just be a storybook for him. And so he came to Christ and said, Bible says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from God, for no one can do this, these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, one is regenerated, it's the same. He cannot be, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Then he could even say to him, how can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered it, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh, it's flesh. And that which is born of the spirit, is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. 
The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. So is it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Your birth, your rebirth, your, regen your regenerating life that you have is a miraculous thing that cannot be explained. It's a divine thing. It cannot be explained. Amen. But it can be experienced. And we all have that in our own different way. God deals with us differently. But by the same spirit and by the same word. The levels of dealings are different. Because he understands that he knows us. He knows what we, what we are made of. And Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? How can these things be? Without the Holy Spirit, we'll read the Bible, we will not understand. We'll just be story night. Even a literature student can read the Bible and interpret it the way he wants. Because that's what postmodernism is teaching us. Whatever you read, you interpret the thing you read the way you want. As though the writer or the author does not have any, you know, aim for writing what he wrote. So what he thinks before writing doesn't matter. What you think as you read is what matters. It's a lie. The word of God is the word of God. We don't change it. Not the way we interpret is what matters. And the way we understand it as God has expressed it. Is what matters. This is so important because if we do not understand this and embrace the word of God and believe the word of God, that experience called regeneration will not take place in our lives. But there's a need for us to be regenerated. Born from above. I love that expression. Born from above. Meaning that the Spirit of God giving back to you. That's why our lives, our lives are spiritual lives. Jesus is 100% human. Even though he's 100% God. And when he came, he made it possible for you and for me that we also will have our birth experience from above, just as he is from above. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus came to our level to lift us up that we can be at a level that God wants us to be. Amen. Amen. Like I've said before, what Christ has not earned, we cannot earn it ourselves. And there's nothing we can do on our own. We only receive what he has earned. He gives, we receive. He invites, we respond. That's all we can do. And that is faith. Hallelujah. That is faith. Now, experiencing the regenerated life, there's a need to experience it. We, we can If you live and you cannot give testimony of your life, how you have come to know the Lord, your encounter with, with the Lord Jesus Christ, if you can't recount that to anyone, that's a problem. Paul invites us to be ready to answer anyone who question our faith. That means that there should, before then there should be an experience of the faith. Otherwise, how do you recount? How do you, how do you defend it? 
experience the grace of God, the regeneration in Christ Jesus. In these short verses, John 3, 1 to 9, Jesus mentioned the word regeneration or born how many times? Seven times. Seven times. If you look at the verse, I mean, what I sent you, the script I sent you, I underline all the where you used born, born, born. And if you see it, seven times it appeared in this short piece of scripture. That shows how important it is. Now, when you read the Bible and you see a word repeating, it's, it's, it's not just for nothing. It's very important. It's emphasis. God is emphasizing when you see a word that is repeating and repeating and repeating. This short verse, seven times. We must be regenerated. Hallelujah. The life we have in Christ, anyone who claims to be in Christ, you made that claim because you have this regenerated life. And you need to understand it. And you have to experience that in order to be able to make that claim. Otherwise, you cannot. It's impossible. Amen. Amen. Thomas could not make that claim. And he said, no, me, I am not going to say anything until I see him. That was Thomas' position. And so anytime he, I don't know why he was always late. I don't know why he was coming in late. But anytime he came in, he would tell, oh, the Lord was here. And he's gone. They said, why? He said, believe, he has come. He's risen, he kept you. He said, no, I can't believe. I want to experience this. And then finally the Lord made sure that he was in the house. He was in the gathering before he appeared to them this time. And then he appeared. And then the Lord stood before him and said, well, touch me, experience me. Put a finger into the holes in my palms and my side. And when he did, he, and then he exclaimed, my Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. It is an experiential claim. Amen. Amen. Unless you experience Christ, you will not be able to declare him Lord over you and declare him God. That's why people cannot say he's God. Many people will give him a place of a prophet or a guru or an important philosopher. But at the place of God, no, because they have not experienced him. But you who claim to be a child of God, Christian, it must be because you have experienced him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It must be because you have experienced him. You have had an encounter with him. He has changed your life. And you can see the change, the evidence of a change in your life, in your attitude, in your character, in the way you conduct yourself. Those are the fruit of, that, of the encounter with Christ. Because he says, by their fruits. Whose fruit? By the fruit of those who claim to be his. You will know that they are his. And so I can only know that I'm a child of God. I, I am born of Christ. I'm born of his word and his spirit. Only by the way I conduct myself. When you are not there, when nobody's there, when I'm all alone, when I'm free to do what I want to do, that's where I'll know whether I belong to Christ or not. Not when we are in public, not when we are among people, because everybody will want to behave well. But when you are all alone, when you have an opportunity to do whatever you want to do, what do you do? What you do is a testimony 
to your place in Christ and your claim to be a Christian. Amen. We have to experience him. Luke 20, 23 verse 14 to 43 says, But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not, do you not even fear God? See, you are under the same condemnation. And we indeed justly for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Surely I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Hallelujah. It's an experience. It's an experience. It's not just head, it's heart, the soul. This man was touched on the cross. The other one was accusing Christ and making mockery of him. And then this one, because he had a certain experience, he said, are you not ashamed of yourself? What's wrong with you? This man, do you think he has done anything wrong that he should be where we are? No, he doesn't deserve that, this thing. But you and I, we are getting what is due us. This man is innocent. And then he turns, he turns to the Lord and said, how can he, how can he, I don't know how he heard about Christ. I don't know whether he was just on a cross on that day or before he went to prison, he's hearing about Christ. That he says he's a king and that he has a kingdom. Otherwise, why would he say, when you come into your kingdom, remember me? Who told him the story? Who gave him the mind that Christ is the king? How? He has experience. The encounter of the Lord on the cross, just as the wicked one also who will not repent. That one refused to repent and he made the mockery of Christ. But this one chose to yield himself to the Lord and see him as Lord. And he declared him king over his life. The choice is always before us. That's what God said. Choose today whom you worship. I was the word of Joshua. But as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. And then the Lord said, I put before you life and death. Choose whichever you want. But I counsel you, I advise you to choose life. The choice is always before us. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The choice is always before us. This thinking of God making some, you know, to go to hell, some never to repent, it's not of God. That's his, that is not his nature. He has not predetermined anyone to go to hell. The choice is always ours. Amen. Amen. The choice is always ours. Not because we are independent or not because we can determine anything. No. But God in his wisdom, in his power, he gave us that little opportunity to make a choice. Amen. When you, when you receive and you, you receive the invitation of Christ and you respond to his invitation, something takes place in your life. Regeneration takes place. Amen. Your heart transforms. Your mind transforms. And your 
attitude, your actions also follow suit. Amen. Amen. The actions may take time sometimes. That's when it becomes a struggle and a fight. But surely, if you hold on to the Lord, there will be a transformation, a total change in your life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Whenever I have the opportunity to speak before people, I always tell people, I am not sharing with you something I have just memorized, something I've just read and come and share with you. But I share also with you what I personally experience, what is really, really part of me, or better still, I share with you what I have become part of. Amen. And so when we have the opportunity to share the word of God with anyone, whether an individual or group of people, remember, you are sharing with people something awesome and great and eternal that you have become part of. You are sharing with others. And unless you have this experience with Christ, you can't share it. Amen. I believe Thomas couldn't talk about the resurrection of Christ to anybody. Can you imagine Thomas witnessing to anyone about the resurrection of Christ before he's, you know, they said, my Lord and my God? No. No. Unless you have the experience first. John 20 verse 28 says, Oh, this is Thomas. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God, let this be your declaration also today. Hallelujah. Let it be your declaration. Let it be your own word, personal word. I pray that we will experience the Lord. Amen. There are people who are completely against anything called experience. For them, it's just the Bible. You read and you and that's it. I believe in reading the Bible because without the Bible, you have no basis for experience. And so our experiences must be based, must come as a result of an encounter with the Word of God. And just having an encounter with God's word without experiencing what it is, is also just reading a story. It means the word is not coming alive to you. But remember the word of God is spirit and is life. And when the word of God comes to us, we cannot remain the same. Remember God says, my word will not come to the earth and return to me void. No. But it shall prosper, it shall fulfill everything for which I have sent it. The word of God works, transforms lives, changes minds and hearts. <laughs> Hallelujah. It turns us away from our wicked ways. When I say wicked, I don't mean those who are mean, not that. That's a different thing, it's a different disease. But I'm talking about people who don't like God. That's the wickedness. People who reject God, they just oppose anything about God, that is wickedness. They may be very nice to human beings, even to animals. There are these crazy things going on right now. Animals right. Sometimes I just laugh at people. There are people suffering around and you don't care. And you think you are caring for a dog and you think you are doing something so great. That's a, that's a lie. Hmm. You just walk in, walk in hatred and selfishness. And you will not share your life and love with anybody else but animals. I'm not saying we should hate animals, no. I have four dogs in my house. My dogs sleep on my bed. I bath them and clean them 
all the time. My dogs are not puppies, they're only small, small dogs, big dogs. Mm -hmm. Three years ago, I asked about them, how they are doing. I, that, they will not take the place of human being. No. So we have people who will claim that they think about human beings, they love human beings, and yet they oppose anything about God. That is not true. That's something else. Hallelujah. We must accept the Lordship of Christ over our lives. And he is our Lord. And he is our God. Now, the teacher of the law, Nicodemus, said, how can this be possible? But this is very possible. And it's very simple. And because of the simplicity of it, he thought it was not possible. So simple. The regeneration, it doesn't take any effort from you. That's why people tend not to believe it. It's too simplistic. How can it be? I've been doing all these evil things for so long, rejecting God and you know, pleasing myself and all these things, and I'm frustrated at the same time and confused. I don't know what to do. And then you are telling me that just believe in the word of Jesus Christ, and then that's it. People can't, people are not able to accept this. It's so simple. Mm. Yet it is true. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. any, in any case, I have never at any time, I don't know if somebody has done, has done it before, I have never at any time sat down to think how my mother, you know, carried me for nine months and then gave her to me. Um, what happened, you know? I want to prove whether I am really born or not. <laughs> I've never done that. I've never thought about even this until this moment. I've never done it. <laughs> so why why would you want to why would you want to argue about someone being born of the Spirit of God, being born as a child of God? Why do you want to prove that? How would you prove that? So people are not able to believe it. It's too simplistic. Mm -hmm. It's simple. You don't have to do anything. Just believe. And forsake your evil ways. And turn to God. Amen. group of young men were asking me, how can a man live without sex? How can that be? And I was like, why can that be? <laughs> why do you think it's impossible? And that was my question to them. I don't know why people think this way. We can't go pleasing ourselves. And I told them that the sexual organ that God made is for a purpose. You don't just go give to anybody or get from anybody. That's on the plan of God. We are not dogs. Amen. And if you are a child of God, born of the Spirit of God, you can't go on living like that, walking in sexual immorality. That's the Spirit of God. If you have a struggle in that, pray to God. Ask for grace. You find grace to work before God. You keep yourself until you marry. It's possible. Amen. It is possible. It is possible. Hallelujah. It is possible. I married at age 39. I didn't go about sleeping with people around. No. 
I've been in Korea for almost three years now. My wife is in Ghana. I'm here. Does he mean I'm not a man? I'm a man. So do I have to go chasing women around? No. Why? I know one thing. I'm a child of God. I know my responsibilities. I know what I have to do. And so there's something called self-control. It's also the fruit of the spirit. You can't tell me you're a child of God and you don't have that fruit in you. Amen. Amen. So horrible outside there. And we can't do the same thing. Christians, children of God, we are regenerated. We are born from above. If you are truly born from above, you can't be engaged in, engaging in things like that and continue to claim that you are born from above. No. Amen. Mm. One day, I left church here. I was going to Dejon. I was going back to Seoul. And there was this lady who was sitting on the bus before I entered. And she was sitting this way. And I, you know, went to sit, you know, because my, on my ticket, I had to sit there were there. And she was there before me. And I was really tired, so I, I, I knew I was going to sleep. And when I sleep, I snore. And so I didn't want to disturb her, so I left her and went back. Not because of anything, just because I wanted to sleep and snow. So I left her and went back. The bus traveled all the way to Seoul. I got down, I was hungry. I went to a shop to eat. I spent about 20 or 30 minutes over there. When I came out, I went down to the subway, jumped on train. I found this lady over there. I was like, and she was just getting close to me. And I was wondering, was she stalking me? Because I stopped, went to the restaurant to eat, and came out. So was she hiding somewhere, just waiting for me to come out? So I was trying to get what she did, that we should be on the same train when I went somewhere to eat. And when we came out, she was asking me. She was speaking Korean. I didn't know what she was trying to say. She was asking me so many things in Korea, saying many things. I, I, Hango Malayo, I kept saying that. And finally she was like, do you want to have sex? Yeah, that was danger. That was a temptation. I am a married man. I know what sex is. And I've been away from my wife for so long. And here is a woman asking me, do you want to have sex? What do you do? What do you do? He said, let's go to the hotel. You can spend the whole night there. He said, I'll pay. She brought her card. And now she cornered me in a way that I became afraid because I was like, what if I should be strong and say no? And she starts, started screaming and says, and then more people come around, I can't speak Korean. She can say any lie and I'll be in trouble. So I kept my cool. What do you do? So you like fellows. <laughs> <laughs> Wedding ring. She doesn't care. She doesn't care. Now, my point is this. There's something called self-control. As a child of God, not everything, you are, you, are, you are free to do everything, but not everything that is good for you. And walking in sexual immorality is one of the things that is not good for us. The Bible says that every sin that you sin is outside your body. But so each sexual immorality is within, is inside of your body, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And then he says, anyone who destroys the temple of the, of, of the Holy Spirit, God, God will do what? Oh, you have not read that scripture? You've, not had a, you've never read that scripture? Anyone who destroys the temple of God, God shall destroy also. 
And so all these scriptures were coming up in my mind. Be holy, for I am holy. My, time, my, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Keep your wedding, your, 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 your marriage bed clean, sanctified. There's something called regeneration. It doesn't allow you to walk in sin. It doesn't allow you to walk and just do what you want to do and what you feel like doing. Even when there's no one before, I mean, there's no one around, when you are free to do anything you think you can do. Amen. We need this life. And if you have encountered Christ, please walk in a life and please God with your life. Amen. The Holy Spirit lives inside of your body if you are born again. If you are struggling with any kind of sin, go to God, pray. Turn your back on the sin. I tell people that it's a battle, it's a fight, it's a war. You have to wage that war against that carnality until you overcome. Amen. Amen. The life we have in Christ is a regenerated life. If it is regenerated, how can we continue to live the way we used to live? We cannot. We cannot. Otherwise, we'll be deceiving ourselves. And that's what Jesus Christ said. He said, not those who call me or those who say, Lord, Lord, will go to heaven, but those who do the will of my Father. Also, the will of the Father is that we keep ourselves clean. Amen. Amen. Allow the word of God to change, transform us, that we may please God. We never want to be obedient to the word of God. We never want to. We will obey every whim of ourselves, our feelings and desires. And we ignore the word of God. If we ignore the word of God, we ignore salvation. Our life is a regenerated life. It's a reborn. It's a life from above. Above. The Greek word for Above or again is pali. And it's, it's the same way for above or again. Not just born again. We are born from above. Born again and born from above. Born by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. And we can't live the way that's not pleasing to God. Hallelujah. Amen. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. How can this be that I should receive this regenerated life? How possible can it be? Bible says it's a free gift. But, you know, sometimes free things, we take free things for granted. Unless we really work for it and sweat for it, we don't really think it's important. At the gift of God, we cannot take for granted because we can end that by our own strength, it must be given to us necessarily. Amen. You can't do it. I can't do it. It's freely given to us. It's a free gift. John 4, 10 and 14. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who is he and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would ask him, and he would give you, or he would have given you, living water. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst again. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of, of water springing up into everlasting life. It's a free gift. Hallelujah. When the word of God comes to us, when we receive it, it, it changes us. It flows into eternity. Hallelujah. Amen. That's last, two weeks ago, the last week I was saying that we are part of something which is far beyond, far greater than us. 
far more excellent than we think we are. It, it, we belong to something that is eternal in nature. We can't understand it. We believe. That's all we can do. You are invited to believe the Lord. Amen. You are invited to take the word of God seriously. Walk by the word of God. I told you two weeks ago, the way you hear the voice of the Spirit is when you read the scriptures, when you, when you see instruction, you take it to yourself. When you see a warning, that is to you. When you see a caution, that is to you. When you see a promise, yes, also to you. That's how we live the spiritual life. That's how the Spirit of God speaks to us. It is possible because it's by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. James 1.18 says, Of his own will, he, he brought us forth, that is giving birth to, by the Word of truth, that we might be a kind of flesh fruit of his creed, creatures. First Peter 1 Peter 1.23, having been born again, or having been born from above, or having been regenerated, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the weight of God which lives and abides forever. Amen. Amen. It is possible because of the word of God. It is possible because of the spirit of God. The regeneration. Our part is to receive the word of God is to believe it. And what happens after? It's up to God. But necessarily you have to believe. You have to accept the invitation. Amen. Amen. And then the final point, the privilege of what? Of regeneration. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. To be born from above, it's not something, of, it's not something below. It's just great. When you think of this, the joy of the Lord just overflows. Hallelujah. You think of this, the hope of life keeps you going in the midst of all that we are going through. It's a life from above. It's a life from God. John 1, 12 says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right, that means power also, authority, to become children of God. Those who believe in his name, we have to believe in his name, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You have to believe. First John 3, 1, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God, and therefore the world does not know us, see? Because we, because it did not know him. The world doesn't know us. The world does not understand us. You know, when you begin to live your life as a Christian, by Christian principles, by the word of God, people don't understand you. You appear very weird to them. And we should not be afraid to be weird. I prefer to be weird than to flow with the crowd that is taking me to, to hell. Amen. People don't want to hear hell anymore. Mm -hmm. Scripture mentions that several times. Following Christ is not because I'm afraid of hell, no. But because I love him. But if I fail to love him, I fail to do that, the end is here. So our motivation to follow Christ is not because of what will happen to death, no. But because we love him, because he first loved us. He shed his love in our heart. We must love the Lord. We must accept him as our Lord and personal savior. 
How do we recognize this life from above? How, how would you know it? You meet someone, and within two minutes, you just talk, and you just know where the person is coming from. Or you see people's actions, some few things, and then you know where they're coming from. How, how will you know? How will you recognize the life from above? First John 3, 8 to 10 says, the one who practices sin is of the devil. So there are people who just habitually practice sin. They just practice it. They practice it. Yes. Because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. This is why the Son of God was revealed to destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9. Anyone born of God refuses to practice sin. Now, this is how you can recognize a regenerated life in a Christian. A person refuses to practice sin. Because God's seed abides in him. The reason why you refuse is because the seed of God is inside of you. The seed of God is the life of God. It's inside of you. It's impossible to have the life of God in you and sin at the same time. Impossible. The two cannot coexist. Impossible. And so when you live among people, when you walk among people, when you meet people who are working with God and doing right, you, you just know. Unless you yourself, you, you are not also working with God. But as you walk with God, you just know. How can it be? We are spirit being. You pick it. It's a life of intimacy. It's a life that you feel. You feel it. You experience it. It's not just knowledge. Let's endeavor to walk in holiness. Because it's a sign that we have the regenerated life. And I said earlier on, if you are struggling with any sin in your life, go to the Lord. Pray. You can overcome that sin and walk in holiness and please the Lord amen. and rejoice in him. Amen. Can I hear amen? amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You go to churches today, nobody talks about sin. Just, I don't know what they talk about. But sin is out. We're deceiving ourselves. The life we have it's a life from above. And people can see it. People can know it. Especially those who are working with the Lord. Amen. You think that is impossible? No. Look at the doctor used to sniff around at the airport. You can put the cocaine or anything, uh, whatever they are trained them for. If you put that thing anywhere, somehow they can, they can, they can sniff it out. Mm -hmm. I ask them, what is it? The membrane that they have over there is so strong, so powerful, that, that we can't even imagine it. Spiritually, what we, if you become spiritual, you can pick things, you can just know. Amen. People who will be deceiving you, lying to you, looking at you, you just know. You just speak it. It's a spiritual life. If dogs can pick those things that are hidden and things and covered and protected, how much more the spirit? Let's walk before God and please the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I hear amen? amen? The life we have is from above. Hmm. It's not from the earth here. It's from above. By the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. That's the life we have. Why the need for this life? Why the need? The last point. Why the need for this life? John 3, 7 says... 
Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants to go, and all these things he said. Now, Jesus says something. He said, you must be born again. It's a must. Because without the life, we can't approach God. Why? Because the regenerated life is not just, it's not a restoration. Uh, sorry, it's not a reformation. You're not being reformed. No. If it is reformed, if it's a reformation, we will go back. Or the next time we see, we just go back into it. And we'll never come back. But it's a, it's a, it's a change. It's a complete change that comes. It's a new life. It's God's own kind of life that he imparts to us. Amen. Amen. It's God's own life. But we have a choice to walk in holiness and to walk with God. Remember? I will say that, and Enoch was not, for he was taken away. But before he was taken away, there's a record that he walked with God and he pleased God. There's a need for us to walk with God. We must walk with God. Amen. Must walk with God. John 3, 5 says, Jesus answered and said, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water, that's the word of God, and the spirit, the Holy Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. There's a need because without being regenerated, no one can enter into heaven. No one can enter into the presence of God. It's impossible. A life as it used to be, so horrible, cannot approach God. For me to approach God, I need to have this new life. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. And this life that God is bringing you in Christ Jesus. If you believe the word of God and hold on to it. And refuse to practice sin. It's not my word. It's the word of God. First John, remember? Refuse to practice sin, live in sin, walk in sin, and walk in righteousness. Practice righteousness. Amen. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to pray. You can put your hand together if you, have, if you want to. We want to pray right now. I just want us to um, lift our voices to God and, and be grateful for this new life that we have in Christ. This regenerated life. Life from above. Hallelujah. Life from above. Life from above. Life from above. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This life depends on the choices you make. Concerning the invitation of Christ by his word to you. As you read the scriptures, or as you hear the word preached to you, your response, my response, is very important. And if you have this assurance in you that you are a child of God, praise God. There's a need for us now to walk in this new life that we have. Walk in this regenerated life. I want us to pray right now. Shall we pray? Just pray, just pray for yourself. And recommit yourself, in, yourself into God's hand. That you will walk in this regenerated life. You will walk in it. You will walk in it. You will please the Lord. You will please Him. Change it up. 
eyes, changing eyes, into the very likeness of your image, Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Bless you, Father. Help each one of us, oh, Father. Those of us who are struggling in different areas of our life and, and in sin, I pray, God, that you will help us, Lord, walk victoriously in your blood and your resurrection power for sin, death, and hell. Help us please you, Lord, and we will become vessels in your hand that you use us to touch others, to bring them into the light, into the kingdom. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We will take the